So you're probably wondering, who is this Embu cat? Is it like, oh, is that Slim? Is that Eminem? Is that his new alter ego? Hi, my name is, huh? My name is who? Who, who, who are we really talking about? Armin Embu, right tackle, Missouri. This guy's come on the scene strong this season. Had a really good year at the SEC, going to get some great competition as we're going to break down his film and take a look at how good he has been as you're seeing some pass protecting reps here, stonewalling some guys. And he's got, first thing that you're going to notice with this guy, really athletic. The way he moves is incredible. And he also has an incredible upper body. The strength that he has in his upper body is really, really impactful. He can he can withstand some power from some of these stronger edge rushers in the SEC competition. And he's got the agility. Oh, look at the footwork right there. And as we get into the run game, you're going to notice that even more in his agility to be able to redirect in space, on the move, and catch defenders at the second level. And also, you see him right here being able to, a little chip with Dylan Stewart, right? Really good prospect coming up in a couple of years. Going to probably be a first-round pick. Doing a great job against him. Here's one versus him one-on-one -on -one in the run game. Pancake. Down on the ground he goes. He is incredibly strong on the upper body, and he's got good movement skills. Two traits that a lot of NFL teams are going to really covet at the tackle position. And he's also got the solid length. Now, I don't think he's going to be the longest guy. I'm going to guess he's probably in that 33, low 34-inch barrier, which for some teams is might be on the shorter side. However, I think he's got long enough arms that are going to quantify for many teams to be able to withstand a tackle. The really the big question for me, and when we get into some of the negatives here, is the size. And that can show up. And another thing we point out here is redirecting in space and pass protection. Sometimes he gets a little heavy with that right lead on that right foot. And he, he struggles on that inside B gap, leaving it open and susceptible at times. That's something where it's a bit of a footwork thing. And maybe also he worries, you know, going against some of the bigger, stronger guys, that can be a bit of a problem. Another thing you're going to notice with him is sometimes he can get a little hat heavy and his hands are really wide. As you can go, we'll take a look at this again. Let's, let's show you this kind of in slow motion. His hands, they get wide. They come in a little wide. Like in terms of like what you want to see is you really want him to be, you know, tight and then tight right in the shoulder pads, pads as well. But he kind of gets his hands really more in a, in a grappling position, in a huggy bear position, as I like to call it. And even though he throws him down, he gets some help from his guard. So it's not a lose of a rep here, but you're going to see this, in, especially in the NFL level, that's going to be more of an issue. Here he's, his hand placement just doesn't quite strike on time. And that's another thing too. He needs to work on, you know, his, see, watch, here, here's the edge rusher. This is uh, Cassius Howell, who's a good player from uh, Texas A&M. And he's able to defeat Embu's hands with a little cross chop right here. Look at that right arm, cross chop, bam. And Embu's got to do a better job delivering a blow. That's really what I want to see with Embu get better on is delivering a blow, being more consistent with his strike timing. And another thing you're going to see with his footwork, notice his feet. I mean, his feet are not great in a good positioning here. This is not a very strong position. This is a position where you're, you're kind of all over the place. Your body's kind of contorting too. Now he's got the, the flexibility to do that and to pull it off. But once again, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And especially when you get to the next level. And as we were talking about earlier, a little bit hat heavy. Look at the stance. Look at the footwork again. Gets a little hat heavy. He's way over his toes. Has the recovery balance to stay on his feet at least here. But that is a lost rep. So these are just things that he's going to have to really hone his skills on. And does he have... Versus these stronger defenders versus Nick Scorton. And Scorton's going to be a first-round pick, in my opinion. He could even be a top-10 pick, who knows, with a good combine. But he's just kind of driving him back a little bit too much. I mean, this is not a terrible rep, but he kind of gets in that chest. He exposes him right down the center. He's going to be able to win this here with a little rip move to the outside. It's just a little too easy. Brady Cook gets the ball out. However, to me, those are some things that are going to be quantified a little bit more when you get to the next level, and it shows by a good edge rusher here, Nick Gordon. Going to some Alabama tape here in pass protection. You see him on the outside losing. Is this LT Overton? I don't think this is LT Overton, but Alabama's got a lot of good players on their defensive line, driving back Embu into the pocket here, and we see him once again, the wide hands kind of exposing the chest. He's just bull rushing him right down the center, right back into the quarterback's lap, even hits his arm. So, is he going to be phenomenal right now versus these big offensive linemen? No. And I think he can certainly improve in that department. He needs to clean up the hand technique. He needs to clean up the footwork. 
Those are two big areas that he needs to really hone his skills on. When he hits it right, man, it's really a thing of beauty because with that athleticism, he does a great job. Let's get in some negative run plays here. You know, this wasn't something that I, I overly saw of him too, too bad. He does lose an inside rep here. Rewinding this here to the back end. And this is a little right lead zone block. And what goes wrong here? Well, you see that score and chop right there and him getting a tackle for loss. And this just comes back to he's in a good positioning right here to turn Nick Gordon. But now you need to show that pop. You need to show that punch. And that's the big thing from Embu that I want to see him improve upon with that hand strike, being more consistent and, and you know, sealing this edge, right? Scorton does a really good job working that ha those hands and being able to chop and, and make a disruptive play and get a tackle for loss. And that's the reason why he's a first round prospect. However, with Embu to be in that first round range, I want to see him do a better job strike and blow and uh, be able to, uh, this sounds kind of funny, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? And uh, secure that edge for the running back. On to this next one here, and you're just going to see him going against Shamar Stewart, another probably first-round prospect there, kind of getting beat. Uh, just lack of power there again. Here's another one, just kind of misphases the block. He, he typically is pretty good with those sort of things. That was just a couple of times. Here he gets a little bit over his face and loses this one to this Alabama cat. Look at the, he's way over his toes here, trying to go in for the kill shot, and he ends up being the kill shot onto the ground there. He has lost, you know, from the four games I watched, he lost balance about two times. So it's time to recap everything from Armin Embu, my report here. I'm not talking about a school report. I'm talking about a scouting report. And Armin Embu, I watched four games of him this season, the Texas A&M, the South Carolina, Alabama, and Boston College games really has made a significant strike because I did do a scouting report on him as well when we did the tackle breakdown in the offseason. I had like a fifth, sixth round grade on him. I'll be real. I was lower on him. He has made big time improvements this year. And as a young player, the third year guy, somebody that can continue to improve, I would imagine if he came back to college too, he could cement himself as a first round type of prospect. And he's certainly going to be in that category, I think for even for many teams with the upside that he has. And with that first step ability, the agility and space, as we talked about the second level, he does a pretty dang good job connecting. And that's another area he's really improved upon is that second level blocking. That's something that wasn't this good as at least it was last season. So really is seeing big improvements there in the run blocking game with his angles and space. Also just having that feel with the running back, really critical with your driving, with your zone blocks, with your pull blocks, etc. In the upper body strength, he is way stronger this season. You look at last year's film, oh, he was getting bull rushed all the time, I feel like and just getting pushed back into the pocket way too often. Now it's more far in between. And you can see that he has certainly hit the weight room. He's gotten stronger, and he's holding up against NFL power out here versus some strong competition. And he also just does a great job at mirroring rushers in general. Like, that's a huge part about it. Like, with your corner, you're just trying to stay in phase. Just like an offense alignment going against a defense alignment, you have to stay locked in, you know, where the edge rusher is. You don't want to get yourself too far to the right, too far to the left, because then you're going to expose yourself. I think Membu does a really good job in that regard of just kind of staying in phase with his opponent. And that's going to make it a lot easier. So even if you're not the strongest guy or, you know, that way somebody has to completely go around you or work a pass rush move to be able to defeat your block because it's so much, you know, most of the times you're not going to be able to just run straight through somebody. And then we go into some of the weaknesses as we saw through the film. That lack of size does show up against stronger, bigger edge rushers. And that's where it's, you know, like a Nick Scorton. He, he gave him some difficulty with some pressure. And the Alabama Cats gave him some difficulty with some bull rush. So that lack of size, only being six foot three, 314 pounds or whatever he is right now, does show up on at times at film. He's not going to completely stalemate. He's not a J.C. Latham type of prospect or anything like that but he does have good athleticism to make up for it. Hand placement, this is another one. I'd say him and the footwork, those are the two areas that I want to see him improve the most upon going into either next season if he comes back to college or going into the draft. You know, the footwork was a little sloppy at times for me. You need to kind of get your feet set, be a little bit more wide with your base with your when you're moving, right? Sometimes it gets a little narrow with his base too, and you're losing power, and that's we saw him get pushed back a couple of times with that funky footwork. And then with the hand placement, really wide hands. The hands kind of come in a little wide too, as I talked about earlier, the little huggy bear stuff. You gotta 
get more tight with your with your shoulder blades and then punch, right? And that's really what I want to see him improve upon extremely going into the next season is kind of that that element to his game and just striking power in general. He isn't the strongest guy delivering blows. Like I know he's got more potential to do that too. And going hand in hand too with that footwork, you saw a few times where he couldn't quite redirect off of his right lead, off his right foot, and that gave him some issues giving the B gap open. So those are all things that I think he can really work and, and hone his skills on with that department of his game. And then lastly, I want to talk about he does duck his head and, and where he got over his toes or ended up on the ground. He was just so far over his feet that it, it's really hard to recover when you're that far lunging into blocks. It wasn't a prominent thing. And that's why I kind of listed here last because I feel like it wasn't a huge issue. It was something I saw and it, it's definitely something that he needs to improve upon. That is going to be my overall grade on him is a third round prospect, which I am okay if you're going to take this guy in the back end of the second round because the talent, this is a guy that could become a really plus starter in the NFL with the tools that he has. And you may say to yourself, put him inside the guard. He does have experience going back to the high school days at guard. That's actually where he played. And then he ended up getting and winning the right tackle job for Missouri. And that's where he's played the since for college. He is a guy though that certainly has the upside to warrant a second round pick. But I do think you're taking a bit of a gamble. I think there is some certain development that needs to go through his game. And he, that's why I list him as a round three guy. Anyway, let me know what you think. Agree or disagree about Armin Embu, a big time riser so far in the draft process and for good reason. I hope you guys have a cool day though. My name's C Sling. I'm doing my thing. I'll talk to you later. Let me know the players you want. I got Kyle Kennard probably coming up real soon. Abdul Carter, I got to do. Trey Amos. So there's some prospects I got on the radar coming up very, very soon. Anyway, keep it cool.